inheritance and genetic control. Now we are going to look at the structure of DNA molecule and also how DNA replication occurs. We are going to look at DNA structure which is DNA double helix. Next, Meselson and Stout's experiment and DNA replication. The synthesis of DNA molecules involves the synthesis of leading and also lagging strands. The structure of a DNA strand. A DNA is a polymer of nucleotides. So this is nucleotides. The nucleotides are composed of a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and also a nitrogenous base. There are two types of pentose sugar, which are ribose. Ribose are found in RNA, and deoxyribose are found in DNA molecule. The difference between the ribose and the deoxyribose sugar is at carbon number two or two prime carbon. For deoxyribose, it has or it is bonded to a hydrogen atom. For ribose, it is bonded to a hydroxyl group. The carbon atoms of the uh, of the five carbon sugars are numbered. So this is carbon number one or one prime carbon. One prime carbon is bonded to a nitrogenous base. Two prime carbon. 3 prime carbon. The 3 prime carbon is bonded to the next nucleotides as you can see from the diagram here. The 4th prime carbon and the 5 prime carbon. The 5 prime carbon is bonded to a phosphate group. Basically, DNA and RNA are polynucleotides. Polynucleotides are always assembled in the 5 to 3 prime directions. A covalent bond known as phosphodiester bond or phosphodiester linkage are formed between the carbon at the 3' prime position of a nucleotide to the phosphate group at the 5' prime position of the next nucleotide. So this is the phosphodiester bond between the nucleotides. The sugar phosphate backbone in the blue box here is the alternating phosphate and sugar molecules from which the bases projects. The directionality of the polynucleotide strand is from the 5' prime end with the phosphate group to the 3' prime end with the hydroxyl group of the sugar. The double helix, Watson's and Crick model of DNA. The double helix model of a DNA molecule was discovered by Watson and Crick in 1953. The, the DNA molecules consist of two polynucleotide chains. The two chains wind around each other to form a double helix. The two strands of DNA form a right-handed double helix. A complete 360-degree turn of DNA helix consists of 10 best pairs with a distance of 3.4 nanometer. So this consists of 10 best pairs. The two DNA strands are stabilized by hydrogen bonding between the two best pair. Three hydrogen bonds are formed between guanine and cytosine, one, two, three, and two hydrogen bonds are formed between thymine and adenine, one and two. The base, the bases pairs in according to the Chagas rule. The two polynucleotide chains are anti-parallel or in opposite direction with regard to their five to three prime direction. The strand on the left side here runs in the five to three prime direction, and the strand on the right side here runs also in the five to three prime direction. So the two strands are anti-parallel to each other. From DNA to chromosome, our DNA is tightly packed up into the nucleus of every cell. The process starts with assembly of a nucleosome, which is formed when eight separate histone protein subunits attach to the DNA molecule. The combined tight loop of DNA and protein is the nucleosome. Multiple nucleosomes are coiled together and these then stacked on top of each other. The end result is a fiber of packed nucleosome known as chromatin. This fiber then condensed into a thickness of 30 nanometer and is then looped and further packaged using other proteins.
This remarkable multiple folding allows six feet of DNA to fit into the nucleus of each cell in our body. The end result is the DNA that is tightly packed in the familiar structure that we see under a microscope, which is the chromosome. Chromosomes are not always present. They form only when cells are dividing, which is through the process of mitosis and mysis. At the end of cell division, our DNA becomes less highly organized. Next is the Chagov's rule. Number one, DNA base composition varies between species. This means that the DNA component of one species is different from another species. Number two, the percentage of adenine and thymine bases are roughly equal as are those of guanine and cytosine bases. For example, if an organism has 20% adenine, the organism would also has 20% thymine. The remaining 60% would compose of 30% guanine and 30% cytosine. So this would total up to 100% of that organism DNA. This rule implies that base sequences within the two DNA strands are complementary to each other. Complementary means that if, the, if one strand of uh, the DNA, the first strand is adenine, the second strand is thymine. For example, the sequence of the first strand is 5 prime. It starts with 5 prime. So 5 prime has to pair with 3 prime. Okay. So next, adenine pairs with thymine. Thymine pairs with adenine, guanine, cytosine, guanine and cytosine and so on. So the first strand starts with uh, 5 prime and ends with 3 prime. The second strand in, which is in the opposite direction, okay, start with 5 prime and ends with a 3 prime. Remember that between the two DNA strands, it, it is held by hydrogen bonds. Two hydrogen bonds between adenine and thymine and three hydrogen bonds between guanine and cytosine. DNA replication. DNA replication is the process by which a double-stranded DNA molecule is copied to produce two identical DNA molecules. In a cell, DNA replication must happen before cell division. In eukaryotes, DNA replication occurs during the synthesis phase or the S phase of the cell cycle preceding mitosis or meiosis. And as for prokaryotes, they will replicate their DNA throughout the interval between cell divisions. There are three alternatives model of DNA replication. The first one is conservative model, second is semi-conservative model, and the third is dispersive model. The first model of DNA replication is the conservative model. For this model, the two parental DNA strands rejoin after acting as templates for the synthesis of the new DNA strands. Thus, for each round of DNA replication, the parental DNA double helix is restored and conserved. For the next model of DNA replication is the semi-conservative model. In this model, the two parental DNA strands will separate the, the blue strand here is the parental strand for example, they will separate and become the, the template for the synthesis of the new complementary strand, the, the purple strand here. And then each daughter molecule consists of one parental strand and one newly synthesized strand. Okay. For the next model is the dispersive model. For the dispersive model, each daughter DNA molecule consists of a mixture of old and newly synthesized DNA. Watson's and Crick's semi-conservative model of replication predicts that when a double helix replicates, 
each daughter molecule will have one old strand derived from the parental molecule and from that parental molecule it becomes the template to synthesize the new, the new DNA strand. So therefore the parental molecule serves as the template to synthesize the new complementary strand. As you can see from this diagram, so this is the parental DNA molecule. So during DNA replication, the DNA uh, parental molecule will separate and becomes the template to synthesize the complementary strand. So at the end of the replication, it produces two daughter DNA molecules that consist of one new strand and one parental strand. In the 1950s, Matthew Messelson and Franklin Stultz were the scientists that designed an experiment to test Watson and Kirk's model of DNA replication. The, the results of their experiment was that it supported the semi-conservative model of DNA replication. In the experiment, they distinguished between the old and the newly synthesized DNA strand by labeling DNA using isotopes of nitrogen. They grew E. coli bacteria in the presence of either a heavy isotope of nitrogen-15 or the ordinary light isotope of nitrogen-14. The experiment basically involved number one, the E. coli that were grown in a heavy isotope of nitrogen-15. Next, all the bacteria of the uh, E. coli incorporated the heavy isotope nitrogen-15. The bacterial cell were then switched to media containing the lighter isotope which is nitrogen-14 and then DNA of the bacteria were extracted at various time intervals. The step of the experiment involved number one, E. coli that were cultured for 14 generations in a medium with nitrogen-15 in the form of ammonium chloride as a source of the nitrogen. So in this medium, it contains ammonium chloride with heavy nitrogen 15. The purpose of growing the bacteria for many generations is to ensure that all of the bacterial DNA would be labeled with heavy nitrogen. At this time, the bacterial DNA were isolated and then centrifuged. This DNA sample from the bacteria cultured in this medium is called as Generation Zero. The bacteria then transferred to nitrogen-14, light, medium and allowed to grow. So this medium contains ammonium chloride with nitrogen-14. From this point onward, newly replicated DNA will be made with light form of nitrogen. 20 minutes is the generation time for E. coli growing at the optimal temperature. Thus, DNA sample was taken every 20 minutes. Okay, so the result were, in the generation 0, all of the DNA is in the heavy form. So DNA samples from a bacterial DNA in generation 0 were centrifuged and then the DNA of the bacteria will be at the bottom of the tube. Okay, like this. This is because the bacterial DNA uh, has the heavy uh, nitrogen. So this bacterial DNA is 100% contains nitrogen 15, nitrogen 15. Next, after one generation, the bacteria that were grown in medium containing nitrogen-14 were isolated and then centrifuged. The result were the DNA was neither heavy nor light but is in the intermediate density. Okay, so this DNA sample, after it has been centrifuged, it contains 100% 
DNA with nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15. So this is because the DNA from the zero generation will become template to synthesize the, the DNA for the first generation. So the DNA of the zero generation will separate and becomes the template. After it becomes a template, when the uh, when the bacteria is in the medium containing nitrogen 14, the bacteria will use the DNA containing nitrogen 14 to synthesize the new DNA strand. So the lighter blue here indicates that the DNA strand, the new DNA strands contain nitrogen 14. So this means that it contains 100% nitrogen 14, nitrogen 15. Next, after the second generation, the bacterial DNA that were grown in the medium containing nitrogen 14 were isolated and then centrifuged. The result was half of the DNA was light, the top one here, and half of the, the DNA was intermediate, the, uh, the middle uh, band here. Okay, so this means that for this DNA, 50% of the bacterial DNA contains nitrogen 15, nitrogen 14, and another 50% of the bacterial DNA contains nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 14. So this is because the bacterial DNA that was in the first generation becomes the template to synthesize the bacterial DNA in the second generation. So it means that the bacterial DNA in the first generation will separate. For this one, it will separate okay, and becomes the template. So this one here, separate also and becomes the template to synthesize the DNA for the second generation. So the, the, the bacteria uh, in the second generation will use the DNA in the medium containing nitrogen 14 to synthesize the new DNA strand. So, so this is the new DNA strand synthesized in the second generation. So if you look at what I've drawn here, you will find that this, this DNA and this DNA contains 50% of the amount of DNA that contains nitrogen 15 and nitrogen 14. And this DNA here is another 50% of the DNA that contains nitrogen 14, nitrogen 14. Okay, so this means that uh, the the heavier uh, DNA will be at the bottom of the uh, centrifuge tube and the, and the lighter DNA will be at the top of the tube. So these are the DNA bands that are produced for the three generations of bacteria or three rounds of replication. Generation 0, Generation 1 and Generation 2. For, uh, for generation 0, as you can see, it produces only one DNA band, which is found at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. So this DNA contains only nitrogen 15, nitrogen 15. So the bacterial DNA contains 100% of heavy isotope. For the, sec for the first generation of bacteria, as you can see, it produces DNA bands that end up at the middle of the centrifuge tube. So this means that the DNA bacteria, uh, the bacterial DNA contains only 100% nitrogen 14, nitrogen 15. For the uh, second generation, as you can see, it produces two DNA bands. Okay, so these DNA bands at the middle, it is the same. Uh, as the first, it contains nitrogen 14, nitrogen 15. Okay, so the amount is 50% of the total bacterial DNA. For the top 
DNA bands. It contains DNA that has nitrogen 14, nitrogen 14. Okay. So this is another 50% of the bacterial DNA. As a conclusion, the first replication in the nitrogen 14 medium produced one band of hybrid DNA, which is this one. So this hybrid DNA consists of nitrogen 15, nitrogen 14. These results eliminated the conservative model that would produce two DNA bands, which is the lighter DNA and the heavier DNA. In the second replication, it produces both light and hybrid DNA. The light DNA consists of nitrogen 14 and the hybrid DNA consists of nitrogen 15 and nitrogen 14. Nitrogen 14, nitrogen 14. So the hybrid consists of nitrogen 15 and 14. So this result eliminated the dispersive model that would produce only lighter DNA bands. So therefore, DNA replication occurs according to semi-conservative model.